Thank you for waiting for me. I gave everybody a scare. <laughs> the last time I did this, I was on the parade square in Safdi <laughs> and fainted. I think that's what happened. I've never had so many doctors look at me all at once. <laughs> they think I'm all right, but anyway, I'm going to have a full checkup after this. <laughs> but before that, I'd like to finish my speech. I will not go into the elected president. There's a lot of stuff which needs to be spoken, but I will find another occasion for that. I'd like, just like to cover two things in my speech, which I think is important and which I should say tonight. One, to do with leadership succession, and I think what happened makes it even more important that I talk about it now. <laughs> and two, where do we see Singapore? Where are we today? Where will we go next 15 years, next 50 years? I think it's good for us to step back from our immediate preoccupations and problems and take a longer look at where Singapore is. But first, let me talk about leadership succession. We've now got the core team for the next generation in Cabinet. But you know, ministers or not, all of us are mortal. Heng Sui Kiat recently gave us a bad scare. Worse than what I gave you just now. <laughs> Much worse. I'm very glad he pulled through and is steadily recovering his strength. You've seen the video of him leaving hospital. It's a miracle. He's all right. The SEDF team who responded to the emergency call did an excellent job, and I'm glad they're here today. And I should say thank you to them because I invited them here as guests and they came to treat me just now. <laughs> the doctors have recommended that Heng Sui Kiat avoid contact with crowds for at least a few more months to minimize the risk of infection. So he can't do his usual community and grassroots work for a little while longer. But they have given him the go ahead to do office work with minimum interaction. So I've decided that Suikat will resume his duties as Minister for Finance. <laughs> DPM Taman will stop covering as Acting Minister. Suikat will focus on next year's budget and CFE. CFE meaning Committee for the Future Economy. I told him, just do the work Minimize contact, which is not necessary. Avoid getting an infection. It can be troublesome. Don't shake hands. Just do namas like that. <laughs> I intend to appoint a second minister to help Sweek it out with operational responsibilities at MOF, and I've decided to appoint Lawrence Wong. Progressively, Suikiat will come back to work, building up leadership and preparing for succession is one of my top priorities. Nothing that has happened has changed my timetable or my resolve to press on with the succession. In the next GE, we'll reinforce the team again, and soon after the next GE, my successor must be ready to take over from me. Su Yue Pu Liu Ren, you cannot wait. I'm sharing my concerns and plans with you because all of us have a role to play building Singapore together. But whom are we building Singapore for? It's not just for ourselves. It's for our children, our grandchildren. It's always been the Singapore story. Every generation doing better than the one before, looking ahead, acting now, giving the best chance possible for the next generation. What is the Singapore we are building for our children? Let's give ourselves some perspective. Look back 15 years. Look forward 15 years. I think plus or minus 15 years is a good time frame. It's not so long that you can't remember what happened before 
or that you can't imagine what will come in 15 years' time. 15 years ago, we experienced 9-11. The world was in shock. Our economy went into recession. We held general elections immediately, November 2001. We had a strong win. We went on to do many things together over the next 15 years. Just look at the changes to Singapore since then. Marina Bay, from reclaimed land, we created a whole new CBD. We built Marina Barrage, Gardens by the Bay. Now we celebrate festivals there, including Christmas and New Year. We built beautiful HDB flats in Pongol and created the Pongol Waterway. We developed One North to create opportunities in biomedical sciences, ICT, new media. We built buildings there with strange names, all kinds of policies. A biopolis for medical, biomedical. Mediapolis for media. This is where Media Corp's new office is. Fusionopolis to bring different things together. And the launch pad, humming with energy and innovation. We built a city in a garden, the Botanic Gardens, very popular. Or the East Coast Park, always full of families and life. We've got park connectors and ABC waterways all over the island, buildings with roof gardens, high-rise greenery, and now the wildlife is coming back. We have hornbills again. This one, his name is Bobby. He was born in the Stana grounds. Then he went to Sungai Bulo when he collected the keys to his BTO flat. <laughs> we have an otter family, famous on BBC, visiting different parts of Singapore. At National Day, we went back to the National Stadium and brought back the Kalang Wave. I thought you were going to join them. <laughs> In those 15 years, we went through ups and downs together. We discovered the JI group in our midst, and yet we pulled together against terrorism. We experienced SARS. We were hit by the GFC, Global Financial Crisis. They did not break us. We drew closer together. Now, we are at the threshold again, looking ahead to the next phase of our nation building. Having lived with terrorism for 15 years, we now find it a more serious threat than ever. Our economy is at a turning point. Again, like in 2001, we had a strong election win, and again, we have a full agenda ahead. If we put everything together that we are planning and doing, what can our children look forward to by 2030? What can we expect Singapore to look like? Physically, the western part of Singapore will be transformed. Lakeside Gateway will become a vibrant business district. The high-speed rail will connect us directly to KL. This line takes a few seconds, but when the rail is ready, it will take you 90 minutes. The Jurong Lake Gardens with a science center will give the Lake District a distinct identity. There will be new jobs, new high-tech manufacturing industries in the Jurong Innovation District. Another town, Tenga, will be built next door. In the north, a Woodlands Regional Centre will be the northern gateway to Singapore with business spaces, housing, waterfront park. SIT in Pongol will cater not just to students but to anyone wanting to upskill. And we'll have more startups to occupy incubators like Block 71. All over the island will be well connected. Eight in ten homes will be within ten minutes' walk of a railway station. And we can jog or cycle around the island along park connectors on the round island route. In HDB towns with cycling park networks like Ang Mo Kyo and others. You can cycle from home to work. For greenery, there'll be the rail corridor plus parks and ABC waterways all over the island. And we'll have many high-quality accessible preschools 
If Heng Sui Kiat were here and still in his old job, he would say, every preschool is a good preschool. <laughs> the PSLE changes now being planned will be long past done. And with some luck, our total fertility rate will be 1.6. Maybe extra luck, 1.68. What? Uh? <laughs> and if you look beyond 2030 into the next 50 years, what can Singapore be? Well, that's mostly for our children to imagine and to create. But it's our duty to sketch the outlines, at least, of SG100 and launch our children into their lives and futures. So what can we imagine beyond 2030? The east, eastern part of Singapore, this is what it looks like today, will dramatically change. Changi Airport, with T4 coming up and T5 later, will be a shining jewel. In Paya Lebar, the Paya Lebar Air Base will have moved to Changi, and the entire eastern region will be ready for us to reimagine, redevelop, rebuild. The PSA port at Tanjung Paga and Pasir Panjang would have gone to Tuas and become the Tuas Megaport, boosting our trade and economy, freeing up land to be redeveloped into the greater southern waterfront city. It'll have 30 kilometers of waterfront. It'll be three times the size of Marina Bay. There's much to look forward to, and we must aim high, but the intangibles are even more important. Will we be stronger as one people? Will the Singapore spirit grow? Will we feel more pride and togetherness as Singaporeans? That depends on how we respond to the challenges and crisis that will come our way. SG50 strengthened our sense of nationhood and togetherness. We grieve together at Lee Kuan Yew's, Ms. Lee Kuan Yew's passing. At the Sea Games and the ASEAN Para Games, we cheered Team Singapore on. At the SG50 National Day Parade, we celebrated how far we had come as one people, one nation. After such highs, we might think, can things get any better after SG50? Can the best yet to come? The answer is a resounding yes. This year, we showed ourselves and showed the world what Singapore can be beyond SG50. We are people building on the work of each generation, looking to the future with confidence. A nation where a young Singapore boy can achieve his dream. In Inspired by his grand uncle, the first Olympian from Singapore. Spurred by his parents and coaches' unwavering belief, dedicating himself to his goal, persevering through ups and downs, cheered on by the whole nation. And that's how we produce an Olympic champion in Rio, Joseph Schooling. Joseph will inspire many more, younger and older, to chase their dreams, to make the impossible come true. We are a nation where every Singaporean has a place, as we saw at the NDP this year. Regardless of race or religion, whether we are able-bodied or we have special needs, we stand together with pride, singing, count on me, Singapore, and signing, count on me, Singapore. Because we know we can count on one another as we sing Majula Singapura. With this spirit, Singapore will advance in our nation-building journey. We don't know how we'll be tested. We don't wish for tribulations to befall us, just to test our mettle. But some troubles will surely come, and I'm sure we won't be short of challenges. We will be tested as one people, and we must not be found wanting. Recently, somebody asked me at a dialogue, if God appeared before you and offered you three wishes for Singapore, what would you ask for? I paused. I was taken aback. I thought about it. I said, if I ask for material things, we will regret it. 
Because after you've got it, you've consumed it, you've enjoyed it, you will not be satisfied, you will want more. But what I would like to have is that we be blessed with a divine discontent. Always not quite satisfied with what we have. Always driven to do better. At the same time, that we have the wisdom to count our blessings so that we know how precious Singapore is and we know how to enjoy it and to protect it. And if we have just these two wishes fulfilled, I think that's enough. Because then... <laughs> then we can keep on keeping Singapore special and building something special in Singapore for many more years. And then we can achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for our nation. Thank you and good night. <laughs>